right, and then the next one is a symmetric active mode. We're not going to go into that. Client mode is one way. It's basically you're saying, hey, what time is it? Server saying, here's your time. Symmetric active mode is that peering that I discussed a little bit earlier. And you would use that when you've got some devices that you want to use on your network as authoritative NTP servers. And you don't have a Stratum 1, but say you want to set up a couple of routers as your NTP servers for your entire network. So they could be getting time from two different uh, Strata 2 servers. Let's say, say this is Strata 3. What you could do is you can actually peer those two devices and they would tell each other what time they think it is. And then they'll hash it out between themselves and agree on a time. So as I said, we're not going to go into this today. That'll be a separate lesson. And the last mode here is broadcast client mode. And this one is actually kind of interesting. There'd be a separate lesson on this as well, but this is one that you might want to take a look at depending on how your network's is set up. Even though it's a very efficient protocol, there is, as with anything else, there's a cost involved with NTP. So it's going to take up CTPU cycles. It's going to take up a trivial amount of bandwidth, but it's going to take up resources on a router. So if you have a situation where you have router one is going to grab its time from a public NTP server and then provide that time to every other device in your network, you're going to have configuration on all your other devices as clients and say, okay, NTP server, you know, R1. And if you have hundreds or thousands of devices hitting R1, it can be a significant drag on your device. So what you can do here is instead of being pulled, you can set up broadcasts. So you could say, okay, R1 is going to get its information. It's just going to broadcast that out. And whomever is listening to this broadcast will get that information. The downside with this is that broadcast-based NTP associations are less accurate because it's one-way traffic. And the other thing is that it to be on the same subnet because you're using broadcast. But this is straight out of the Cisco documentation. And it says that if your network is localized and has more than 20 clients, you might want to take a look at using broadcast client mode to save on bandwidth with um, system memory and CPU resources. There will be a separate lesson on this as well. Okay, and here's a quick visual. So here's our different modes. In client mode, the server updates the client with NTP information. Symmetric active mode, you're basically server slash client. It could be either, um, but you're providing information back and forth via that peering. So it's bi-directional traffic. And then the broadcast mode, you have a server set up here and it's just going to broadcast out. And whomever wants to listen for that, again, it's got to be on network, can pick up that information. So we've gotten this far and we haven't shown you how to actually show the time on a Cisco device. Uh, show time would probably be the most logical command but show clock is what you're going to use. And these slides are from my other lesson, which is uh, setting the time on a Cisco device manually. I'm not going to go too deep into this on this lesson because I do go a bit deeper in that other lesson. So go check that one out. But basically show clock is going to show you your software clock. And then show clock detail is a good command to know about because it will show you not only what the software clock is set to, but where it got that information from. And here you can see that we are getting our time source from NTP and also can give you some additional information. We're obviously running uh, uh, daylight saving time on here and it shows you when that begins and ends. This is for your information as well. If you do a show clock, you want to see nothing in front of the time. You could see an asterisk or a period. The asterisk means that the time is not authoritative, that the software clock is not synced or has not been set. And as you can see here, it's set to March 1st, 1993, which is epic time that's discussed in greater detail in my other lesson. But basically, it has no idea what time it is. So you may see an asterisk if you're not running NTP. If you're running NTP, you might see a period. And that's important for troubleshooting because that period means that the NTP is not synchronized. And a lot of times you'll see this when NTP was up and working, but suddenly it doesn't have communication to that NTP server. You'll get a period there. You'll have the time, but you'll have a period in front of it. Now your time can still be relatively accurate. I mean, it could be incredibly accurate from human standards, even though you have the uh, period there because, because it had been at one point synced via NTP. All right. And to set the time manually, again, I have a whole lesson on how to do this. It goes a lot deeper with this, but you will want to know how to do this for NTP, especially if you're setting up uh, one of your routers as an authoritative NTP server, because you want to set the clock. If you're going to be sharing out time, if you're going to say, I'm the master clock, you want to make sure that your time is accurate. So you do this from privilege exact mode. It's not a configuration mode command and it's clock set and then you know you can use a help to guide yourself through it and you set the clock and then we do a show clock. You'll notice that that asterisk is gone. If you do a show clock detail, it will say, hey, the time was set on this device by the user. And just to make it clear, this is the software clock. The hardware clock is going to be referred to as the calendar. And if you want to see what that is set to, you would do a show calendar or I don't know if there's a show calendar detail, but anyways, the other lesson goes into 
into this a whole lot deeper and you'll walk away from that lesson knowing exactly the difference between the hardware and the software clock. But just to let you know that what you're looking at here is not the hardware clock, it's the software clock. All right, blah, 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 theory done. Let's get into configuring this sucker. So we're going to take a look at configuring the NTP client mode and how you're going to do that is you're going to use a single command. It's really easy. So on R1, we're taking a look at the clock and we can see here that it's set for January 1st of 2000, which is about a decade off, more than a decade actually. Our device is going to be the NTP client, so we need to specify a server. And we can specify a group of servers if we want. Don't know what the limit is, but we probably will want more than one. But anyways, in this case, we're pointing it to this 173 address, which is going to be a public NTP server. And again, I'll show you how to find a list of those later on. So now after that's done, we do a show clock detail and we can see that the time has updated to the accurate time and we also see that the time source is NTP and here's one of our NTP uh, verification commands there's very few of them there's actually very few commands there's really only two that are NTP specific it's uh, show NTP associations and this gives us a wealth of information so we could see here here's the server that we are synchronized to and we know we're synchronized because it says master and sync that's what the asterisk is for configured well we configured it so it's there and then what's kind of cool is it's showing what its reference clock is so it's going to show you where it's getting time from. So if this is a stratum, well, we can see here, show you that information. This ST stands for stratum. So we know that this is a stratum three server. So it's actually getting its time from a stratum two server, which is this 207 address. And here's the polling. Um, this must have just come up. When it first comes up, it's going to poll every 64 seconds. But then once it says, oh, you know what? This guy's all right. I, I believe him. I trust him. He's giving me good time. It's actually going to go pretty quickly down to 1,024 seconds, which like I said, is 17 minutes. You can go 17 minutes without an NTP poll from your device to the server. Now the delay reach offset, you can look in the documentation to get information on that. Those are some of the variables that it uses to keep the time as accurate as it does. A lot of math. So really for a lot of your NTP configurations, this is going to be it, a single line. You just need to point it to a device that's going to give it accurate time. You could really boil this lesson down to this one command. And as I mentioned, there's really only two NTP verification commands. There's show NTP associations and show NTP status. And then you get more information by adding the detail keyword at the end of show NTP associations. We already saw the NTP associations. It's going to show you the address of the clock, all these symbols down here are important because you want to see an asterisk and saying that you know you're synced up and you're good to go here. It tells you the stratum and it tells you where it's getting its time from. And we'll see selected and candidate come into play a little bit later when we have multiple NTP servers configured. And from a design standpoint, you're going to want to do that. You're going to want to have at least two. If you lose contact with one of them, you have another one that can jump in in its place. So now show NTP associations detail. Well, gives you exactly what it says, more detail. And you can see here the polling is now at 256 six seconds. It initially started out at 64 seconds and then it's 256 and you can see here the polling interval it's going to match the peering polling interview. It gives you all the stuff. I actually truncated the output here because there's a ton more stuff. Go play with it. Have fun with it. I don't care what I'm looking for basically is this first line because it's telling me that this is configured. It is our master and one of the coolest things that you'll see in the output from a Cisco verification command is sane. We'll show you in the next slide what the opposite of sane is which you could probably guess. It is valid it tells us what the stratum is, which is three, which is what we see up here as well. And then down here, it says that we are in client mode and that the peer is in server mode. So then NTP status is just going to tell you that clock is sync, stratum four, and the reference is this IP address up here. Now you're probably looking at this and, hey, wait a sec, stratum four, this is a stratum three server. What's showing you when you're taking a look at the NTP status is the clock. So your device is getting time from a stratum three clock. So your clock is actually a stratum four clock. So if somebody was to peer to you shouldn't use peer because peer has a different meaning in NTP. If another device is set up as a client and is using you as a server, you will show up as stratum four. But when they do a show NTP status on their device, their clock will actually be stratum five and so on and so forth. That's a hierarchical model that we talked about. Okay. And here's our commands, but this time we're taking a look at an NTP setup that just is not working. And we can see here that we don't see that it's synced. We do see that it's configured. We configured
configured this to point at a different router that basically is not providing us with any clock. And there's some things to look for here. Of course, if the reference clock is quad zeros, that's bad. If you don't see the master synced or even master unsynced, that's bad. Stratum here though, Stratum is 16. So basically when you have a Stratum 16 device, it means that it's not getting an NTP. It's just not providing NTP here. And you can see here that our offsets all that stuff reaches zero blah 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 you don't have to go that far into it polling will stay at 64 seconds because it's not getting information it's just going to keep saying hey what time is it and not hear anything back hey what time is it and not hear anything back so now if we take a look at our details for our association we can see that it's configured we did configure this guy to be a server but this fool is insane it is not saying it's insane it's insane invalid and unsynced Ooh, gangsta the stratum is 16 again, so we're not getting shit back from them. Our mode is client and pure mode is unspecified. So that's another thing to take a look at when you're troubleshooting. If it had synced up, we would get a pure mode back and that would be server in this case. So then uh, if we do the NTP status, we could see here that the clock is unsynchronized and the stratum is 16. We have no reference clock. So if another device had configured us as the server and they were trying to get NTP from us, it's not going to work because our clock is now unsynchronized and we are stratum 16. So we're not going to advertise downstream either. So that's one of the reasons why you really want a couple of different clocks here for your NTP association so if one goes belly up that you're not going to be stuck with an unsynchronized clock and then not be able to pass accurate time information down to your next stratum level of NTP devices. So you're good to go you want to set up NTP on your network and you're saying I'm going to use a public NTP server so how do I find one? bookmark this page. Uh, basically, you can just bookmark ntp.org and from there, it'll give you all kinds of open access public NTP servers. And you can search on stuff like the stratum level. I think they show stratum two and stratum three. You can find them by geography. And that's what I usually do is that what I'll do is I'll go ahead and wherever my router is, if it's in Asia, then I'll use this pool. If it's in North America, I'll use this pool. Go out to the site, check it out. It's got a lot of good information out there. And when we do the lab portion, we'll, we'll surf out there in real time. If you're in North America, you can use this pool. And basically you're just gonna go to the pool. It's gonna say, okay, well, here's a uh, server. And the, the advantage of using a pool of course is that if one of the servers goes down it's just going to serve you up a different server from that pool and if you click on this you can go even closer you can find you know stuff that's in america versus canada or something even closer to your city if you know i'm in minneapolis i can think i can get stratum 2 servers from chicago if you want to get that accurate with your ntp try and find a server that's closer anyways uh so what you'll do is ntp server as we saw and then here's where you might want to have ip domain lookup enabled you only need it really when you initially put in this command. So it's going to take the fully qualified domain name, go query your domain server, and if that comes back with name resolution, it's going to actually use the IP address. So when I do a show run include NTP server, it's not stored in there as the fully qualified domain name. It's stored in there as the IP address of, in this case, the pool. If you don't have IP domain lookup running, just do a resolution in, in DOS or wherever and, and just pop in the IP address. As I mentioned earlier, you can and probably should configure multiple NTP candidate servers and you do that by just repeating your NTP server and then pointing it to the fully qualified domain name or IP address of the server. And you're going to want to do this in the real world. You're going to want to have more than one source in case it goes down. And I keep saying in case it goes down, one thing with NTP is that once you're synchronized, it's going to maintain its accuracy pretty well if you lose connectivity to an NTP server. It's not like if you lose connectivity to an NTP server, all of a sudden it's going to be saying the time is 1993 again. It's just going to continue with the time that it has in the system clock, but it's not going to have an update. So you don't want it to go, you know, for an extended period of time because then you have the possibility of clock drift. But if it's down for a little bit, it's not going to be that big a deal. But, you know, just so that we have accurate time, have a couple of them. So if one goes down, it's going to go ahead and start getting NTP time information from basically the secondary. Like I said, that's pretty mindless. Just throw in a bunch of different servers and you will have redundancy. The interesting bit with this slide is it goes through the process that Cisco devices use to choose an NTP master. So by default, it's going to choose the most accurate clock, which it's going to decide based on the stratum. So the lowest stratum server available is going to be chosen with a couple of exceptions. It says here, Cisco will never synchronize to a machine that is not in turn synchronized itself. So if you have a stratum one server and it loses its mind and all of a sudden thinks it's 1993, 
Huey and it's not synchronized, the Cisco device is going to be smart enough to say, okay, that, that thing's not synchronized. I don't want time from it. Let's go to our next choice.